a trail behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from uh, from Starlink giving us uh, views of Starship's onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now, this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high-speed data during re-entry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights uh, where we're just we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it as much as possible. Uh, Re-entry is going to be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform, especially that heat shield as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into star the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition signal, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now, we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, Certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that, that enables Starship to help control itself and, and, and survive the heat of reentry, which like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, pr getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are views still... brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still <laughs> communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah. Again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. 
Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed. But you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic yeah, phase. Absolutely. So like we said, these views are being provided by uh, a couple Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship itself. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you. Uh, but you can see the telemetry there on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you watch closely, you can see the speed decelerating. Again, that's the friction um, of the atmosphere resulting in this plasma field, or excuse me, the blanket um, that is uh, potentially blocking the, the Starlink terminals right now. So we'll bring those views back to you if we get them. But right now, for those of you that have recently joined, uh, Starship is currently re-entering Earth's atmosphere. This is super exciting because it's the furthest and fast, fastest that Starship has ever flown. It's just absolutely incredible. Major test milestone, something we wanted to accomplish on flight two, getting to it today. So just awesome. Now we actually have some heat shields here. So these are what's doing all the work on Starship right now. Uh, there are 18,000 hexagonal uh, heat shields like these. Uh, so this one that I have is flat, like this is what would be positioned on the flaps of Starship, whereas Shiva has something a little different. Yeah, the, the one I have would be on the curved surfaces of Starship. I'll just put it in frame here. So we've got these attached at various points around the vehicle. Like you said, Kate, 18,000 of these tiles around, and they're doing the work to make sure that the structure of the vehicle doesn't carry all that thermal load so we can recover the vehicles eventually and, and get to rapid reuse on yeah. them. They're really lightweight. Uh, they, they sound um, a little different than I would have expected them to, but they are ceramic. Um, and these are, are what's helping Starship uh, survive through this period of entry. Um, we're not sure how far we're gonna make it. Again, this is the furthest that we've gotten uh, in our test flight, but the further we fly, the more data that we can get, and that's ultimately uh, the measure of success here, which I, I mean, I think today has been a huge success given where, we, uh, where we've gone and how much further we've gotten with both the booster and Starship itself. And so right now we're still waiting to see if we're going to get data back from this ship. We might be in a bit of a blackout period right now. So still waiting to hear the status on it. But yeah, it was, we got to the actual entry portion of today. We started into peak heating, which was just a really big milestone. Uh, Starship is pretty unique in the way that it re-enters, especially for something reusable. The closest parallel has been the space shuttle. Um, when we're comparing Starship to like when we bring a Falcon 9 booster back, we're talking about 20 times the energy given the velocity that we're moving at and all of that energy just gets converted into heat. And then we need to use those tiles to just help dissipate that heat. They're not ablative like you would see on something like Dragon, which uses an ablative in the capsule shape. Um, so they are these tiles that are made to be reusable. So any data we're getting on the actual temperatures it was seen during heating, um, all of that is just really hugely valuable. Uh, where Starship is really unique is, and Kate and Shiva have talked about it a couple of times, is once we're through this kind of hypersonic uh, section and we get down to the subsonic. And that's where we really learned a lot and proved that Starship's really just its basic shape could work. Uh, and we did that during the suborbital campaign. Uh, again, if you compare it to the shuttle, which entered, it had the wings. It had a similar heat shield system, but it had wings. 
uh, and then was almost flown like a glider once it re-entered and was down to those subsonic speeds. Uh, with Starship, we're not doing that. We're just coming straight down. Uh, we'll hit terminal velocity, which with Starship is around 200 miles an hour. And then we use a flip maneuver to ignite those engines, do a landing burn, and then touch down on the ground. Uh, so you don't need a runway. We're doing that, again, designed because when we go to the moon, when we go to Mars, uh, there's not going to be a runway there for us. And so that propulsive landing uh, is going to be really important. This is an animation of pretty much what we were just watching on actual Starship video, which is pretty incredible. Um, but we go through peak heating. Uh, one of the benefits of today's trajectory, actually, we got closer to what the heating profile will be on just a normal mission uh, when you compare it to our previous flights, which were headed out to Hawaii. Um, so we go through peak heating, and then we hit subsonic, and then... Uh, Starship splashes down in the ocean. Again, we're not doing a landing burn on this flight, uh, and we're not expecting Starship to survive the impact. We're not going to be recovering any of the hardware. 